Good, e good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, August 5th, 2024, regularly, regularly scheduled select, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, with us tonight is Flo Smith to my left, Joe Staub to my right is Carla Nuizel, uh, Carla Nuizel and Tor Nelson. Um, I'm Brad Town and additions or changes to the agenda. Uh, I'd like to remove the fire department board of directors discussion. Any other changes? No. Um, let's see here. Public comment. Hearing none. Um, Belknap Road Class 4 portion condition. So I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, you'd received a call from yes, uh, somebody on that. Yes, uh, we had uh, actually a couple of calls about the uh, finish of the road surface. I am assuming that the road itself is in passable condition, just the surface is a little rough. I know uh, those of those don't remember me, I'm Anthony Amaral, I'm the one who originally brought this up. Uh, you know, Tim has been a great help with me maintaining the road from the gate on up, and I really appreciate all that. And of course, this was brought up because I was more concerned about my neighbors. Um, I, I, I don't understand, I mean, I read the class four policy, you know, um, it was written in 2016. I kind of wish I was a fly on the wall when that was being written and everything. Um, I guess I'm a little bit concerned in the sense that why is the planning commission allowing residents to be built on class four roads? You can get up there, okay? I get up there with my truck all the time. Many times I have to put it in four wheel drive. If you're going in a regular sedan, you're gonna have a heck of a time, you're gonna bottom out on there. Um, listen, I understand municipalities and it's like a business and you gotta sit there and you gotta, you gotta allocate your funds and so forth. And you know, as such, I even tried going down there and basically taking a box grader and grading that portion because those are some really, really bad ruts and everything. Unfortunately, the rain came and it's pretty rough going up there right now. Can you make it up there? Absolutely, in a four wheel drive, you can make it up there. In the event, you know, like I said, you have uh, Nina who's gonna be selling the house to her, uh, her ex-boyfriend, I believe, and uh, he's gonna be living up there. Mike Voppel owns that property. Damian Barnett, you know, he's gonna be building up there, I believe. And I, I just, like I said, after reading the class four policy, why would the planning commission allow residents to be built on a class four road? I understand my deer camp. I take full responsibility up there, you know, but I'm more concerned about my neighbors. You know, something happens to them. Oh, Lee, can you imagine EMS can't get up there? They have to park down at the bottom. And then all of a sudden, can you imagine the liability that could possibly come to the town on that? So, you know, my biggest intent was just to sit there and, to, you know, grade that up, you know, but I don't know. I mean, after trying to box grade it and then all of a sudden the, uh, the, uh, the rain water is coming back down there again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ditches probably down on the side. Uh, you know, right now my, and I brought this up to you last before, about the agency of natural resources doing a walk up on the class four road about that culvert. That's where I've been focusing all my time up there. And listen, if agency of natural resources come up there and they sit there and say, well, that's not done in accordance with, well, you know something, agency of natural resources didn't want to help me. The state of Vermont didn't want to help me. Your big thing about stormwater runoff, but nobody wants to help me, so I am doing the best I can. I would like to sit there and say that when I was a young man, I've learned how to fix things, how to farm things, and that's what I'm doing right now. Nothing illegal, don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> but I'm just taking tin and kind of sitting there where it's all rotted out in that culvert and maybe putting some branches and logs and rocks to hold it up there, so. But uh, that's, I hope you consider. I Listen, I realize how busy Tim is, the number of personnel he's got. And listen, if I had my uh, CDL license, I would sit there and say, Tim, drop off that grader. I'll play with that for a while. But uh, I know he would want me to do that. <laughs> so. That's where I stand. I guess I would really take into account for the town to consider the liability in the event something's going to be done from an EMS standpoint, and you know, and they can't get up there. Um, you know, we do 
take exception to certain class four roads in accordance with the policy that we do maintain them. You know, and, and I realize Berlin has exploded from the days of my Uncle Fred, back when Tim's father was up there. But it was like the unspoken rule. Once a year, they would sit there and grade that whole way. And they don't do that, and I understand. That's why I took on the responsibility for my portion on up. Um, but like I said, Tim's been a phenomenal help with me. You know, we were able to get some crushed asphalt and everything. But listen, just sensory override. The flood's killing everybody, you know. And, uh, you know, and I think that's really why Nina, because Nina called me up. She told me what was going on. I'm like, Nina, you know, take a deep breath, you know. Uh, you know, but she just had hip surgery. And I guess that tore her up just trying to get up to the house and everything. And, uh, and I told my like, listen, the select board's aware of it. You know, so, but I think um, she, you know, she obviously exercised her right to communicate. And I think she reached out to a few individuals. And um, so, and I had noted, and, and thank you, Tim, for letting me know this was on the agenda tonight. Um, and the thing was that uh, I, I actually contacted Nina, and she's actually health sitting for somebody over in Marshfield right now. So that's all I get to say, unless you have any questions. Yeah. Any you. thoughts, Tim? Like I said before, if we're going to do anything up in there, we, we would have to act out. What was, what was put back there after the flood was just strictly dense grade. And I mean, we, that was the contractor that did it. I mean, we didn't fix any other roads to speak of. They didn't, I mean, they didn't know no better yeah. when they were in there. And at that point, there was no road existed anyways, because that, culvert up at Tony's gate. They had logged that upper property and left trees and everything else in the stream and you know, I mean there was down trees and everything else and it kind of got jammed up at the end of that culvert which ended up forcing that brook over the culvert and down the road and then that's what ultimately got the whole bell map and I mean from his gate to Mirror Lake Road that's where Brookfield Road was, was all down on Mirror Lake Road and then in, um, what's his name, Sfield. And, um, Phil's. Yeah, Phil, the deal is. That's nothing but three inch dense grade up there. Like, we could probably grade it, scuff it up. <laughs> but they're gonna have flat tires like crazy because it's nothing but three inch stone to drive on. So if we were going to do any maintenance, we would have to add some sort of finished up go something to grade. Is there FEMA money available to private I, roads? Uh, I don't know. I, I know I was the interim, and I had to deal with uh, the, the COVID funds. I have no idea what if, if FEMA would even consider class four roads. They don't. They don't. They don't. consider class four roads. No, they okay. don't. But if I have my driveway washed out, I could claim the damage and try to get disaster assistance, right? I mean, I think it's under individual assistance. Yeah, that's so what I'm, you, that's what I'm apply, saying. If they apply, well, I don't, I don't know. I've never tried. Except the uh, um, this July flood is different than the 20. Well, it hasn't been declared flood. yet. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering if there. And I don't know that there's any indication that there's going to be individual assistance funds for that. I think there are. It's a much. It's a much higher standard than for public assistance funds. My understanding was it, 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 that it might meet that it, the damage should meet the standard, but I haven't heard anything. But it's but it's the class four road. It's not a private road. It's not a, it's not a driveway. Yeah, I guess okay. And, and so. And just trying to, to think outside the that, box here. You know, <laughs> we're a year past last year. And we. No, no, but this year. I know, but we haven't seen any money from last year oh. either. So, <laughs> like, the process isn't. Oh, I know. speedy enough to get anywhere is where it's going to be any assistance to them in the near future. Do you know if any houses have been, if the DR, well, it'd be the zoning administrator of the DRB, have any new houses been permitted up there? Yeah, I believe uh, Damian Martinez's house was uh, permitted. I think he originally wanted to go with uh, three houses, but they decided that it was a deer yard. And, and, and you are absolutely right. That logger did a, a nasty job, a nasty job up there when he was logging that out, and that was when the Chinette still owned it. So, I mean, Damien inherited that right there. And, and you know, I didn't even think about that. So that's why that culvert got clogged up there. And it, it was terrible. I mean, like Tim said, I mean, you thought you were on the moon. I mean, there was like a path. I mean, and it, that was, 
It was pretty scary going on. Yeah, I'm just curious because we do take into account accessibility for emergency vehicles whenever we, on the DRB. I'm sure Tom does too when he permits houses, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, I know the, you know, the three houses was uh, issue, I don't know, three or four months ago, I think that was, maybe six months that. ago. Yeah. But yeah, I believe that's been withdrawn or closed out without yeah, the permits being issued. Because yeah. I, you know, I know Mike Vapo. You know, he uh, he ended up spending a lot of money to get electricity ran up there and everything. Um, and you know, and, and, and I, you know, Mike, I, I think it, I, I don't know what happened with Mike and everything, but I guarantee that he. But that's all been that's all been zoned and permitted that he that they can build up there. That was his intent right there. And so I think that's going to you know if he sells that property. Somebody else is going to move in there and build it because everything's up there. If the wells have been drilled, the uh, you know artesian wells, you know the uh, iron out, the power's up there through Washington Coal Electric and everything. So I guess you know, like, like I said, you know, I just you know, and I'm not going to flog a dead horse. You know, I think we all understand the importance yeah. of everything with the EMS and, and um, but you know, obviously that this is Tim's profession, and I didn't know you know density. All I know is I got. So pretty rugged tires on my truck. <laughs> I get up there. I don't, I don't know how familiar you guys are. I know Brad knows. I think maybe you might have gone over toward. You've probably been up there. Carl and I went up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. 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 I think so. I think, and I think. Joe's familiar with it. Joe's familiar with it. I'm familiar with it. I wasn't okay, up there. I'm not sure. Your, your name, ma'am? Flo Smith, and Flo. I was not at the site visit. Okay. Wow, we had coffee, we had donuts, we had everything. <laughs> okay, I mean, <laughs> pizza, ice cream. Tony takes care of us. It's very <laughs> near. He really does. <laughs> yeah. Because we had met with the Chenettes, me and Vince. I think it's two years ago now, maybe, at some point. They ended up selling it since then. I mean, they wanted to bring the road up to class three standards, and they got all the you know, the town spec and everything else, and then they looked into it, and then my memory serves me correctly, there was some sort of landowner dispute about the adjacent landowners that own the side of the road didn't want the trees removed to widen it out to what the width of the road should have been, because it's, I mean, once you get up past the class three section, there's turnouts on the right-hand side going up in, but, I mean, the banks are four or five feet high. It's just a natural ditch through the woods is really all it is. You know I mean? It was, it was put in there as a cart path for horses when it was originally put in. I don't know if it was ever used as a... Because it went out with the interstate, right? Yeah, one of the troubles I always see with the Class 4s is that usually they're Class 4 because nobody's on them. And usually they're Class 4s because they've washed out before, so now they're they they almost become brook channel, mm -hmm. and on this one here, um, basically, I mean, any estimate on what it would cost just to put some couple uh, whatever gravel would need be needed up there. And how I'm much gravel? I'm not saying widen it out. I'm just saying put a something that can be that can be graded with a scraper or something. And how much gravel would that entail, in your opinion? Yeah, I think originally I, I, I measured from the uh, turnaround point. I was thinking four, but 528 feet. But of course, it doesn't, you know, need to go all the way. But I mean, if you can do it, you know. Of course, the other trouble with doing any kind of maintenance up there is is actually the turning the trucks and the equipment around. You know, you almost have to back down and make another pass instead of going up and turning around. So, 500 feet, or 540 feet, give or take, at 12 feet wide with four inches deep, so you don't catch stones and all that other stuff, is roughly between 140 and 170 ton, give or take. And then it's, Sounds like a lot. Sounds like a lot to me. Well, it means gravel. It's over 2,000. 
It's a little over 2,000 just in material and then we'll figure in our time, you know, to haul it. I mean, you're looking at, if you added up all our time and equipment time, you're looking at probably roughly 4,000, maybe a little more, give or take. Which I would sit there and it's not, you know, from a, from a business standpoint, easily $20,000 to $30,000 is collected on taxes up in Bell Map Road on a, on a yearly basis. And how many houses up there? It's uh, well, on the, the, the portion of the road we're talking about, yeah. you have Nina's house, you have Mike Voppel, and like I said, Damien, I, I didn't realize it was forward. But the, uh, the continuation is deer camps. Estes has got property up there. Um, I got my property up there. The Lords have got their property up there. Balls and Ellie's got their property up there. And then um, a flatlander came on in and was able to sit there and pay the price that Doc Siegel wanted for the 80 acres. So she's up there now. And that's the property that has already the well drilled and power up there. Is that the one? Uh, Mike Wapo has it, has okay. that stuff. But there's no structure there, right? There's no, no he's, been living, he's been living out of camper. So there's one, there's one house. Yeah, one house, house right now. And you, mean, you guys are going to be the one to make the ultimate decision. But, and it's nothing personal against Tony, and he knows that. But you know, I mean, we have other residents, camps that are on class four that have asked for the same assistance and have told no and have since hired people to do do the work and spent their own money. So like my only concern was is where do you draw the line? If you do one you kinda gotta do them all. And we don't have the time or the funding but that's ultimately your guys' decision. Did you say the others have camps or there's a residence? Camps. I mean, the same as Tony's. Well, you know but there is but no residence. Technically, they yeah. use it as a residence because they're here from the point when snow goes and they can drive in there till the snow comes. So I don't know where technically they, you mean, they live yeah. in South Burlington, Colchester area, but they spend their entire summer here. And I don't know exactly for the other ones. And I said this before, but I'll say it again. There's some towns that do have, let's say, a class road fund. And they, I think we should explore that. And, and you put X amount there, and you, you know, there's stipulations with it. Maybe you can only apply for so much every yeah. other year, or whatever that is. Have to match it or something. Um, yeah. I, I think this is clearly a, a benefit to all class four roads and yeah. yours as well. That's a good idea. Well, it also goes back to maintaining what we have. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keeping it. But, and then, but at the same time, you know, you got to realize if you're moving, you're going to be on a class four road, you know, you better have a truck or four wheel drive or something that can handle it. Uh, you know, your little sedan. Toyota or Nissan or stuff, you're just, you're not going to get to it. Mm -hmm. Just, that's just the fact of living on a class four road. And emergency services will try their darndest to get up there and hopefully come back without it being too expensive. How about that? That's what happens. We've been to the top of that. Yeah. That's my big concern is the emergency piece. But. Thank you for sharing your concerns openly with us and being thorough. Yes, and Tim, hope. for you sharing your views too. Mm -hmm. uh, next uh, meeting, take and have the, um, do you include a copy of the class four? Uh, Policy. Policies in there. Okay, because we're also going to have the site visit for oh. Browns Mill Road. Yeah. I don't think you're here for that meeting, but the couple came in to talk to us about that. Okay, well, it'd be good for the refresher course. Um, yeah. Anything else on Belknap? I would take and say we um, 
not do this. If, if uh, we were to roll them into one, the ones on uh, uh, Brown's Mill, I'm just kind of curious what you're looking at for overall well, well, Brown's Mill is a request to upgrade the class three, so that would be yeah. So that would be on them to get yeah. into that spec before we even consider it. Uh, anything? So nothing else on Belknap. No. Um, yeah. Let's take and get the uh, the. Um, policy on that and see what we can derive from it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I understand that, you know, people uh, buy land on class four roads, so they have a place that they can be alone. And right. Unfortunately, it, there's unintended consequences too, so. Um, yeah, anything else on this? If not, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Thank you, Tony. Yep. Thank, you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, you know, very much, Tony. Yep, and uh, you know, if I can be any assistance, I, I'm more than happy. You know, I mean, if we're able to sit there and at least get some thing, I'm not committing myself, but I got that old '67 Massey Ferguson with that box grader, and I can sit there and I can run down there and run it back. I guess the only thing I'd be concerned about is like that water's still washing down there. And that's mainly, I think, because of the what I would consider improper installment of driveways up there. I mean, they're all ledge, they just pounded them into the ledge and they all dump straight to the road. And there's no drainage up there and I don't, I mean, I've never been up there driveways, but I know that there's a lot of drop, there's a lot of water that comes out of those newer driveways where it heads to your camp. You know, I feel like that's yeah. a fair, fair amount of the problem is, is the drainage from those properties now and then again once they logged in there I'm sure that definitely changed yeah. the flow and landscape you know what I mean because it does every time you disrupt the land it changes the flow of yeah. water yeah. something gets diverted in a direction that it was never diverted before and then it channels and you know what I mean well, regardless of the outcome, which you all decide, I hope you obviously rule in our favor, you know, but listen, I'm still, I'm still going to be sitting there coming up to Tim and tugging on his shirt saying, hey, what do you recommend on this? Like I said, that culvert, I don't sit there, I'm, I'm just telling you, it's fixed. It'll be fixed. Lots of brushes and everything. Lots of old dead wood. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Working in the right of way on 115 Brookfield Road. Uh, so we got a request uh, for a temporary driveway or culvert across a ditch uh, on Brookfield Road. Uh, Tim has looked at it and doesn't have any issues with it. Uh, so I move to approve the right away permit for 115 Brookfield Road. It's a temporary access for having to put a sewer system into that house. And they were talking about this last year, weren't they? No? Okay. That was a thing different thing. Okay. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion on this? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, capital improvement planning update. So we've got Carl here and Ron is online. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We jump right in tour. So I'll go right ahead. Thanks for having us back, uh, Select Board. Good to see you all. We are um, making some progress and want to give you an update. And we had a couple of questions to sort of check in with everybody. Uh, Carl is here, and I am remote, of course. So um, we've kind of broken this up. I'll do a little intro and then Carl will go over the um, the memo that was provided with those questions and we'll go from there. So um, the capital improvement plan, it's a update tonight. We've been meeting with every, pretty much everybody that we could think of, the departments and the employees 
looking at old reports, trying to pull data together, working with Tour on data collection and access to Berlin's um, engineering data as, as needed. So we feel like we're pretty successful at that first initial phase. Uh, this next phase uh, is developing a couple of questions. So we want to write those up and get those to your meeting tonight. As far as a follow-up from our last meeting, April 15th, uh, we've confirmed the private water systems. We've checked out the uh, Capital Fire Mutual Aid System radio system uh, paid by ARPA. There was a proposal to finance it over 10 years, but that was uh, deemed to be a better ARPA purchase. And uh, let's see, and then the um, funding question. So those those are the three areas that we left with in April. The funding question um, it, it's sort of the last thing to do, if you will, uh, but we wanted to let you know that we're thinking of a combination of funding sources that we'll all detail for you uh, probably over the winter. But um, if any, and I think we know what they are or likely are going to be as far as options, uh, but we'll put some numbers to it eventually. So don't don't worry about revenue at this point. Just know that we we have some ideas and we'll we'll get to that when the time comes. The first first part is this asset um, in, inventory and the uh, answer to some of these questions that Carl's going to go over. So once we have the direction from the board, we'll go back and complete the asset inventory, uh, collect uh, more information, and apply what we hear tonight. Uh, to start to sketch out what what you might call a uh, capital plan, but really it's it's really making sure, and we'll go back to all the departments that the base information is accurate. Uh, all the equipment is accounted for, the life cycles are agreed upon, and our ballpark or good estimates for the next five to ten year, fifteen year, twenty year window are acceptable to the town so that we can start planning the, the revenue side. So at that point, I think uh, Carl's gonna take over and go over the questions and, and provide any other information. All right, thank you, Ron. I just add to what um, Ron um, gave his uh, uh, report is that he also um, took photographs of all the equipment and various facilities as we were um, visiting with the departments like Tim and, and the road crew and um, also some of the, we all met with all your boards and committees and commissions. And, um, and, and also um, I would add that we're getting great cooperation from everybody. And everybody seems to be um, enthusiastic about this project that um, you've embarked on, that they all see that it could really be valuable to the town. So. Hopefully that continues and uh, so we can give you a good capital improvement plan. So <clears throat> as you're um, I'm sure aware, uh, one of the um, assumptions that, that has to be made um, for a capital improvement plan is life cycle. How long do you intend to keep something or how long before you would replace something, like replace the roof on a building or how long would you keep uh, please call. Uh, so uh, we, we would like to um, start to get some input from you tonight, uh, although you, you don't have to give us a hard and fast answer this evening on everything, but just um, generally, I guess, you know, what you're thinking or what questions that you might have. Um, you probably are aware of your, some of your current budgeting practices I believe you're buying a police car every year, and I think it was every set, you're keeping truck seven years mm -hmm. now. Uh, but I don't think you really have a set plan for how long you keep a grader or front no. loader or anything yet. So those um, kind of details, um, and then there are um, numerous other things that we're finding, especially with the sewer and water department, and you know the generators here and that at the uh, sewer and water facilities. Some decisions need to be made about how long you would uh, keep those before replacing them. Um, 
We did provide uh, a sheet that came from EPA and gave some examples. Those are um, intended, I think, for a water system as I read down through that. Um, so it doesn't really you know, pertain to everything that, that you own and this number of things that, that don't pertain to you, but just to give you some idea in the utilities area, some of that equipment's going to last a long time, whereas the police cars are, aren't going to last very long. Any thoughts about about the life cycles, or would you like us to um, catalog what what the town has been doing, and what the departments heads think? Make a suggestion. I mean, I think this. I mean, what you put here is good. That has, I think, as far as what you suggested for police vehicles, highway plow trucks. I mean, warranty makes sense to me. But I mean, that's where the little seven-year life cycle comes yeah. from. Is we buy a seven-year warranty, which pretty much covers almost everything on the vehicle, yeah. and when the warranty's up, yeah. I mean, keeps your maintenance low. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, you, you get the oddball stuff that might not be covered or there's some other maintenance issue with the plow equipment that isn't under the chassis warranty. Yeah. But, I mean, it seems to be kind of what everybody's doing is just trying to, and you still get a fairly decent resale value yeah. at that point. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense. And then, I mean, I, you're saying get recommend on water and sewer, town engineer, I think that makes sense. I don't know what other people think, but. <laughs> and on the buildings, you want to consider yeah. the various components in the building. Right. So your, uh, your roofs on the buildings, and those might be different depending yeah. on the material. You know, an asphalt shingle, you, mm -hmm. you might be looking at 20 or 25 years, but if you have a standing seam, Roof on something, and I don't know if you do yet or not. Uh, I don't recall. Um, that might be have a longer life. Yeah. That would also include your uh, heating systems yeah. in the buildings, and over at the road crews' garages, the overhead doors is another thing that should be considered. That together, they would be a capital item. Yeah, I mean, I do think of a list, full list, but I mean, I think everything on here makes sense to me. Sounds good. I do. Have, the only thing, police and fire radios is ten. Is it really ten years? That seems like a long time. For radios. Yeah. This, this seems. No. Like, I mean, it says technology changes quickly, but I would think that. Depends on what you're talking about as far okay. as the radios go. You know, if you're talking about a handheld or a mobile radio, um, it's different than, you know, the base radio, yeah. or, you know, the the. The repeater up on the hill, those things. Yeah. I mean, you get different components. Um, I was going to ask. <coughs> okay, I'll wait till you're done. No, no, that was, I was just curious. Is, I mean, I, I guess something like that, I thought maybe 10 years was a lot, but maybe it depends on, like you say, it has to be broken down. I mean, that's an average or something. Yeah. So, Carl pulled up uh, overhead doors. Do you, do you have those serviced at all? Do you service them, or just when they don't work, we fix them? Yeah. Okay. No, that's fair. I mean, the, there's a few of them that are, I would consider newer. I think they were replaced. You know, I've been here almost five years, so it was before me. So within the last probably seven years, there's been a few of them that were replaced, but one of them, the one on like. That end of the building toward Maplewood is old. The bottom starting, the bottom panels rotting, rusting. Just, you know, but usually, if we don't hit them or they don't malfunction, they kind of just keep working. <laughs> you mean, on that aspect, you know, what I mean, it's been the talk for the last few years about either renovating the garage or rebuilding or make, putting up a new garage so it's kind of been put off maintenance <laughs> have been kept to the low yeah. to not overspend money on something that may either be torn down or re-renovated so 
I mean, there's that aspect too. Hey, Carl. Yes, Ron. The voice from the wall. Uh, <laughs> hey, you scared me. <laughs> I, I wanted to follow up on what uh, Tim has just said and how and life cycle uh, just for a it gets a little complicated, but it is something that the town needs to address in the in the in the determination of funding. So when you invest in a capital item, you have basically four components to the life cycle. Uh, one is what is the level of town maintenance? Now maintenance on its own could be zero, right? And that means your replacement cycle, life cycle is less. The second one is repair. And, and that's, I think that's what Tim was talking about. If, it, if a truck backs into the overhead door and you get it replaced, you may, you are spending potentially more money than you need to. So repairs along the way are pretty critical for the life cycle. Even just to meet manufacturers, you know, number that they give you when you buy it new. So repair is another function of your budget um, along with the maintenance. When you get to the end of the, assuming everything else went well with your capital item, you still have a rehab, re rehabilitation option, and then you have your replacement option. Uh, a lot of the water and sewer infrastructure goes through rehab. It doesn't go through replacement because it's so costly. Um, you can also break down a, a, some, some fire engine companies are talking about uh, the, the rehab of a fire truck versus new because the new is so expensive. Uh, a lot of fire departments ignored to my, you know, not, not in a slight kind of comment, but really good maintenance can make a fire truck last a long time. If you don't maintain it or wash underneath and get the salt off every call, you're going to reduce your life cycle. So I just want to bring those four things into the mix that it isn't necessarily just saying we're going to do 10 years on a loader. If you don't take care of that loader and grease it and take care of it, you're going to have some rehab costs potentially, and then you're going to you know reduce your life cycle. So, just just think of that. It's not as simple as that one number of, of life cycle. Yeah. Those four yeah. things those four things work into it. I think everything looks good. Maybe just the next step is a complete list, I guess, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's what would be um, after we complete our research. Yeah. Then, um, this and the, and break it, it'll be broken down, like you said, with roof, yeah. different aspects of the buildings and that kind of thing. Will it be very detailed? Yes. Yeah, so, well, for okay. what, um, like the next item is definition of capital. It's oh, yeah. Threshold. Right. So wherever you set that. Um, yeah. I think the 10,000 makes sense. And you folks had a few questions for us as well? Or were they built into these what these you discussed? Questions. Questions. Okay, very well. Excellent. So yeah, I mean, 10,000, I think 10,000 makes sense. Yeah. So uh, think, thinking about the, the threshold amount, the higher you make it, the more chances are that something will not be covered by the capital yeah. improvement plan and then when you do need to replace it you might find you don't have the money set aside and oh it's a big hit on your budget that you're to do it on the other hand if you set it the, too, low. The, uh, too low you're going to have a lot of items in your capital improvement plan which just makes more work for staff to keep things updated mm -hmm. so you want to try to find that balance so if you had an item that let's say is going to cost nine thousand dollars to replace and you haven't been setting aside money for it and after say 12 years it's time to replace it is finding nine thousand dollars in the budget you're preparing going to be a real problem or do you think you can handle that i think we've been doing it so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I yeah, think that's part of suffer. planning the rest of the budget, right? I mean, you have mm -hmm. to account for that kind of stuff in the other, in the short, in the, in the budget generally. So, I mean, that's my opinion. I'm only one, but. Yeah. 
and that is the 10,000 is um, going to be the federal government's recommendation in a few months yeah. to go with 10,000. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always good to, you know, that they have a, there's been research, I'm sure, behind that, and so <laughs> why reinvent the wheel? Carl, on, um, like on replacement, say you have an item that isn't going to be, maybe hit the 10,000 threshold, but you know it's going to take and be rolling over. Computers are a good one. You know, not the whole system, but you know, individual computers for, say, the office or for the uh, police. Um, it, if it doesn't come to the, if it doesn't come to the ten thousand dollar threshold, that means you the board will have to take and budget for that separately. Yes. Um, Computers have been discussed a little bit in some of our meetings and some of the research that uh, especially Ron has um, done that uh, it's not advisable to have computers in the capital improvement plan because you're, you're not, a computer might be a thousand to two thousand dollars now. And uh, it's true, you want to be looking at making it a practice to build those into your budget. Replacement cycle. And you might have a, an appendix to your budget document, which is your computer technology plan. And you, you, because of the different uses, you might be spending more money on, let's say, Tom's computer than you would for um, even the town administrator. And you might be replacing police computers more often because of the way the harder use that they get in t being taken out in the uh, police cruisers. Uh, so you maybe have a plan for that, but then you just follow that in your operating budget each year. Okay. Uh, Brad, I just yeah. I want to I want to chime in one thing specific to your comment. So. Uh, going back up to the radios, individual radios can be $500, $700. If the town's plan, like Carl is saying, and, and what you just did with your 60 something thousand dollar purchase with the ARPA money, if that purchase is going to be the new plan for radios, that every 10 years you spend 70000 plus or minus then you definitely can put that into a capital plan because it's coming all at once as one system, making a huge impact. And maybe you do want reserves at 7,000 a year for the 10 years, you know, create yeah. that reserve fund like Carl was saying. And that becomes a non-issue because you're putting it away in those increments every year. So in year 10, you have your 70 and you, and you buy it through that kind of a process. Now that that can be done two ways. You can do it with other funding or have it as an annual appropriation, you know, uh, rate up rate out of the police services budget, uh, so that that goes into a reserve for that one purchase. You have to be careful with reserves. You know, once they're put in the reserve, they they should remain dedicated to that original purpose. Not saying that you can't change it because the board can do that, but uh, it starts to mess with the overall plan once you capitalize it like that. Because yeah. you're taking resources, putting it away for special purpose, you want to make sure that when you, when the time comes under the capital plan, you don't all have to, you don't have to go back to like the operating budget and find the seventy. You won't have ARPA again probably in ten years, so the yeah. reserve fund is a, a good way to deal with that kind of a big system purchase that builds and gets done in one year, every five years, every ten years. Sounds good. So we should um, be looking at using ten thousand dollars as our cutoff. I like that. I do too. <laughs> and our next question was about um, the software. And Ron has mentioned this earlier, and he's met, uh, noted it again at the MOE sent to you that. Um, you know, this could be done using 
and um, Excel and Microsoft, so a combination of some spreadsheets and some text to give you a plan. Or you could um, acquire and utilize a cloud-based system and which would carry with it an annual uh, fee for the right to use that e equipment. But it would also give you um, maybe a little bit more um, options for things that you could do with it. And uh, maybe Ron might uh, jump into this point and talk yeah. about the software. Yeah, sure. That it, you know, it's one of those questions of who is going to keep up with the data. And the select board needs to, my, our recommendation, be very clear with staff about how this thing gets done. And what I mean by that is every time something is purchased, it's, it goes into the capital plan file so that it can be pulled out when needed to update the plan. Who's going to do that? Is it part of their regular job? Is it something they um, need help doing? Is it, you know? All those mechanics of, of a new task, um, based yeah. on what Berlin has done, you, you've you relied on consultants to come up with the plan. But the second part of that is just like with a piece of equipment, it has to be maintained to be useful. Uh, now it's sort of required by your Berlin Town Center. So there's, there's that kind of a mandate, if you will, to keep it up. Uh, the other option is to hire consultants every year to update it before you do your regular budget. I wouldn't recommend that because we're going to try to come up with a system that's, you know, staff friendly. <laughs> so, but lacking that kind of a process, uh, the software question is just that. You can have the basic uh, Excel type Word package that comes in that, it, you know, people that are familiar with those software packages can update, produce a new report. Uh, the software programs that are being developed for the cloud bis basis are, are a little bit more transparent in the sense that they're live all the time for the public to view. Um, it's hard for the public to jump into a, you know, a, an Excel report and do things with it. You're going to, you're probably going to post, if you're doing just Excel, you'd post a PDF report. Here's the capital plan for the next year. And it, it really wouldn't change. A cloud-based system would be updated all the time. People can, you know, do different things with the information, charts and graphs, and what you know, look at more in more of the background information. So, it's and and I know the town administrator job descriptions on the the agenda for tonight. You know, that person generally would be the lead person to implement the capital plan schedule. Uh, and they may have super spectacular skills with Excel and be able to update the report with no issues every year. Or they may be the opposite and be totally a cloud-based person ready to jump in on any of the new systems and make it uh, accessible to board members and the public through a cloud system and prefer that potentially. You know, They may be familiar with something already when they're hired that works really well for that time. Lots of options there. Our recommendation at the current time is to start with the Excel, get all the good data in there, get it into a format that can be loaded up into a software-based system later, if you so, if you so choose. I think that makes sense. Hmm. Well, and we just transferred from well, my work, uh, transferred from an Excel program and tracking uh, a boatload of information. We did it for a short time and it ended up being five years. And, and that's, that is a lot of work. But I like the idea of putting it into Excel just, just to have it documented and for an easy transfer. Yeah, well, and plus just testing out, you know, we, we wouldn't know what system and right. was, you know, what, the, what the best But I think system. the end goal would be. Yeah, yeah. I would, okay. I would think so. Cloud base. Yeah. Assuming that, yeah. Okay. Because that would be nice to have that that information available in a way that people could sort of view and understand. Sounds good. Um, we 
included in the memo here a, a, a opportunity for public comment. I don't know if anybody has anything. Or, anybody? Um, <laughs> select board have any questions about anything we haven't covered? No. Good job. Thank you for everything you've done to both be proactive. Appreciate it. I don't think we have anybody online either, so do we? That wants to talk? <laughs> Nobody's got their hand traced. Anything else on this? Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, you both. Thanks, Carl. Thank yep. you, Ron. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a good night. Good Thank rest you. Of the you both yeah. also. Okay. Um, let's see here. Vermont Bond Bank Agreement, Sky Hill Loop. So this is the funding to perform the engineering on Scott Hill Loop uh, through the Vermont Bond Bank on um, month $59,930. This is um, the agreement and the resolution. Uh, so it's sent out in your packet. So I will make the motion to uh, approve. Your second? Second. Now this is for the water loop to uh, uh, for correct. The, for the water system so it will be redundant. Correct. Okay. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, in, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Berlin Common, Newtown Center, B Street, renaming to Eclipse Circle. So this is the drive that's going to go from the Berlin Mall Road, uh, make the next break back to Berlin Mall Road, but it'll run between the um, Starbucks and the new outlet, Outlaw F, and then also from Outlaw F to the Fox Run, uh, just that little L shape. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, held a naming contest. Um, they've received several suggestions or nominations for it and have narrowed it down to. Eclipse Circle um, that's been vetted through the E911 Commission and uh, Police and Fire Departments, and nobody has an issue with that. Uh, with that name, Did they give as you far the top? as uh, I think I saw the top three? couple, of three or something. <laughs> yeah, busy B, B lane or something, B road or something, and. I don't remember what the third one was. Huh. How come those aren't two separate roads? We get away with it, with it being a circle. I guess. Well, Eclipse I circle. I have one other question with it, because that map don't match up theirs that they showed us last week. They didn't have it coming back out to connect right now. It was left to be a T over there. Hmm? When me and Craig met with them over there the other day, all it was was just a T. Well, that might not be their part of it. Well, it, you know, I mean, you got Fox Run there across, and all it does is right. come in straight off of there and just end at a T. Yeah. It never but that's to the right. That's not, and that be outside of might Fox Run, that Fox Run's, I guess, purview of that. I was curious because that map doesn't look like the one that they showed us last week over there. Uh, motion on this? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? Um, hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here, local options tax adoption. I included in your um, packet the last meeting 
um, that our approved charter provides for the select board then to make the final uh, determination as far as the you know the local options tax. It's not a automatic vote by the you know approval by the legislature. I've been talking to the tax department. Uh, and January 1st um, seems to be a very doable date for them. They like to get uh, word out 30 to, uh, 90 days in advance and to get their systems up and running. So I will make the motion that uh, we adopt the local options tax for sales, meals, rooms, and alcohol effective January 1st, 2025. And I'll second that motion. Any comments? I just have a question. Did they did we figure out the issue of the zip codes? That still have to be worked out. They're they're aware of it. Um, they're saying you no. Know, they're they're flat out saying there's going to be issues. Um, they had you know, other towns where they've adopted the options tax, and they were, you know, especially that first week with the uh, bricks and mortar stores. The first week that it's open, they're you know they're working frantically. Um, making out, you know, they do outreach in advance, and we'll do outreach. But there are, you know, they see an issue come up, somebody's charging it, that should be charging it, or vice versa. They, you know, they're very proactive in reaching out to those vendors. Yeah, I'm more concerned with what they're going to remit to us, right? Based on the right. zip codes. Uh, but okay, I mean, it makes sense. I think that they need, you know, I know there was a desire for it to go in effect quicker by some people, but I think that it's unreasonable to think that it can be implemented quicker than that, no. especially with our, the issues we have. Well, they, well, they do it quarterly, and yeah. so the, you know, if that would on October yeah. 1st, and you've already missed yeah. the 90 days okay. for that. Yeah. Makes sense. Any other comments on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, County Administrator's position description update. So this has been on the agenda for the past couple of meetings. I've not received any proposed language on this. Um, so I'm ready for adoption on this. I think it looks good. I did yeah. want to look at it closer, but it looks good to her. It's just a lot. Now, have a motion on that. I'll move to approve it. Second. Any further discussion? Um, Tor, mm -hmm. now that you've been in the position for a while. No. Um, <laughs> That's the red marks. Yes. Um, what I'm wondering is, 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 um, is there any benefit to having an assistant? Well, Keep in mind, I've not been full time in this position. Um, I think definitely yes. The cheapskate in me wants to say no. <laughs> well, the only thing I was thinking is is that uh, it would take in uh, you. Would Basically, you could divide out some of this stuff so it doesn't look so intimidating to somebody who's applying. And I don't know, I mean, I was relying on you to take and maybe not be such a cheapskate, but if, if the work was there for, for, for a, an assistant. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think definitely it, it could be. Um, you know, we've got a lot on our plates and a lot moving forward. And it's going to be a lot um, more. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, we currently have an assistant town manager, or administrator? Slash zoning administrator. Okay. How much of this is is currently being done by somebody other than your seat. Not much. Not much. Not much of it. No. 
Okay. And I don't know that Tom really has the, um, the time capacity. Okay. Um, okay. That's not the capacity. right thing of, but um, to take on more himself. Right. Okay. Um, keeping up with the uh, you know, the zoning development review or planning commission and grant writing. And especially if you know we start getting into more of these grants, there's a whole lot more on the back end with the grant administration. Um, you know that we're going to have to look at it as well. Should we have the discussion to break out the assistant town administrator slash zoning administrator to be just zoning administrator and then have a designated assistant town? I kind of get the idea that's the direction Brad was leading. Yeah. That's so what the, I'm thinking well, the, too. It makes sense. Yeah. The, the trouble. The trouble is. And is, town health officer. Is when these positions, like the treasurers, the uh, the treasurer and the town clerk, the administrator and the zoning administrator, you know, when nothing was going on, you could do that. And things have changed drastically. Indeed, they have, and so. Uh, much as I hate to say it, I'm afraid that we may have to expand the office staff to keep up with, especially, I mean, I would not be ab uh, against having it a zoning assistant, zoning administrator, or, and um, a town administrator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think even Tom needs a little. Mm -hmm. It makes total mm -hmm. sense to have that support in both capacities. So, but uh, of course, even if you have an assistant, if you're if something, if the administrator is not here, then they now they get to have the full boat, like the administrator would. You wouldn't have uh, if you divide the duties out. If somebody is out, the duties have to be done, mm -hmm. right. and it just falls back onto the assistant. There may be less need for overtime for either position mm -hmm. having the assistant as well. So that is a huge uh, benefit factor. Mm -hmm. Just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, you know, what was that position you wanted so badly? Economic development. Economic development. It's full time? Well, we had it. Well, I think we had it for time. like, I think I had it, well, not even out but I had it like 15 to, well, I guess 20 hours would be half time, but. About 15 hours, but you all combine it. You all poo pooed that idea. Yeah, the trouble is the I'm skills. I'm not bitter is about that, that at all. Thing. But yeah, that's, I mean, I was, that's what's going through my head. Yeah. But I mean, I just think that from Brad's right, I just think the duties are just becoming overwhelming, I would imagine. Things just can't get done. Then the other thing you want to consider is if you want to have an um, economic development person. Then perhaps you could take and combine it with a uh, a uh, civil engineering position. So you're not spending all this money on your well. That's another. Control. That's another. The different item skills I'm thinking of. Yeah, but even that's a, that's. I mean, we are spending it. a lot of money on engineers, and engineers are. Um, they're all flat out themselves. Yeah, that's the know. trouble. You, um, there's no speed to it. Correct. So, um, <laughs> yes, if, so. if having an in house engineer. That's like a lot of February. Versus, if, if you ask me if I'd rather have an in house engineer or an assistant, I might be more geared to say an engineer. I, that seems like a lot big difference, big difference in salary to me, but maybe I'm wrong um, <clears throat> between those two positions. But we're spending lots of money on, on external engineers. Is it? And the other thing, remember, Carla, is that if you have an engineer in house, there's nothing that says you can't hire them out to other towns because other towns are going to be in the same bind we are. Having to hire an engineer in a timely manner. Uh, while we're while we're talking positions, I do want to, something just popped into my head because one of the things that one of 
and I don't remember which town or city it was, but they when they hired their economic development person, they funded the position for three years, I think, and then after that point, it had they had to bring in grant money to pay their salary. Yeah. So it was one of those things where it, it was dependent on the performance because they had mm -hmm. to bring in enough money to cover their salary. And it might have even been a decreasing, like first year it was full, second year it was partial, third year, you know, which is an interesting way to approach it because then you, you know, they're motivated to, to get the grants in that are gonna pay for their, mm -hmm. their existence, so. Well, I do think that <clears throat> sometime in the fu near future, the town is gonna have to take and re, re, uh, look, or review all of the uh, job descriptions. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this is the start of yeah. Yeah. a series of things, yeah. I agree. Anything else on this tour? No. Uh, no. Good job. Um, see here. So does that mean we're going to advertise this position? Yep. It's ready to go. You want uh, me to put in your application uh, for you? <laughs> Did everybody want to take in, uh, take another two weeks to review this, or do you want to vote on it now? Oh. Did we already vote? No, we didn't vote. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Monday. It's nice to vote now. <laughs> Look, everybody's comfortable with the job yeah. description. Okay. So can always change in the future, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can say is you could broaden categories so that you lump things together so that it looks less intimidating, but it takes somebody, I mean, I wanted to look at it and I just haven't had time. So unless somebody feels like they have time to do that, I, th I think we should just go ahead and approve it. Is that a motion? I think we already do have a motion and second on the table. Okay, um, any other discussion on this? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Public Works Board reappointment, Rob Allen. Uh, Rob Allen, our longtime chair of the Public Works Board, his term is up and he's agreed to stay on for another term, so I move to reappoint him to the Public Works Board. And I second that motion. Any discussion? We have none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, License permits, vouchers, application warrants, move and minutes. I think Joe has this. Grace. Oh. Okay. Make motion uh, for to pay payroll warrant two five dash zero two for the payroll from July fourteenth two thousand twenty four to July twenty eighth two thousand twenty four to be paid on July thirty first. 2024 and the amount of $65,164.96 to include payable warrant 25G2 with the check number of 24131 through 24163 in the amount of $171,500. Your second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And minutes for Monday, July first, twenty twenty-four. I make the motion to approve the Monday, July first, twenty twenty-four minutes with just a few minor edits on page two. Um, in the top paragraph, just changing sky share thy to they, and on page three, first uh, full sentence, putting in the word via after reimbursable, and I'll just share that with tour. Thank you. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And let's see. round table go. I'm good. Thank you. 
Flo? I was approached by Amy Gamble. She works for the state and uh, she's a co-organizer with Donald DeVoyle and they have contacted me about what is called the Window Dressers Project and I believe the Berlin Energy Committee is involved and um, I can't speak to the whole project but what they'd like to do is come to a future select board meeting and explain it to us and see if we as a town want to get involved and if people would be willing to participate and learn etc sounds like a program that they've already initiated and it's to help people with window um, scenarios and that's about as much as I have to provide at this time um, but both of them have reached out to me and I told them that I would address it and then see if folks would be willing to have them come and explain it to us or send to her more information so you can review it as well. Is this the Amy Campbell that's the V-Trans engineer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tour? Uh, nothing. Carla? Just want to say that Joe and Tour and I were at the groundbreaking and it nice. was really nice. It was pretty well attended and Tour gave a nice speech and it was a little muddy, but other than that. <laughs> That's wonderful. That oh, was that it was good. It looked wonderful. I saw pictures and it's out in the public and everybody's happy. So yeah. That's great. I should be noted that the town clerk's office went to smoothies afterwards and did not invite us. Oh, jeez. Uh oh. Um, if nothing else, then any executive session? Yes. Just give me a couple. Uh, just give you a two part. Uh, I move to make a specific finding that premature general public. Knowledge would clearly place the town of Berlin at a substantial disadvantage regarding the police department labor relations contract. Your motion there. That? that was a motion. Second. Yeah, second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, then I move to enter into executive session regarding personnel under one VSA three one three A three and the Police Department Labor and Relations Contract under 1 VSA 313A1B. Do not anticipate any action coming out of either item. Okay, all those in favor? We need a second. 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 Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are in executive session. <laughs>